I'm Angela. I'm a physicist. I do videos about science and data and academia sometimes. And today I'm going to talk about women in space. But to make it fun, I'm going to race myself building a Lego rocket with a woman pilot because if I have unlimited time, I will talk for an unlimited amount of time about women in space. Don't make fun of my Lego skills. This was my first ever Lego build. So it's 1962, middle of the space race. Um, Werner Werner von Braun is a very famous rocket scientist. You've probably heard of him. He's very high up in NASA and he's asked by a reporter, do you think women will ever be in space? And he repeats a joke from a colleague where he says, they're reserving 110 pounds of payload for recreational equipment. Cool. Um, so I don't really care about the opinions of Werner von Braun, literal Nazi, um, but the fact that he's repeating a joke from a colleague kind of tells you how women were viewed at NASA at that time. Like they felt comfortable enough to repeat it and say it and talk to each other in that way, as if women are recreational equipment, nothing else, which is a little shocking actually, because at the time NASA employed many, many women mathematicians and engineers, like, which was huge in 1962, two years before the Equal Rights Act. So in 1962, they're training to go to the moon, right? They're doing lots of missions, the friendship missions, the Mercury missions, the Gemini missions, deep cut, but all the astronauts are men. And let me tell you why. These are the requirements to be an astronaut in the 60s. So less than 40 years old, less than five foot 11 inches, in excellent physical condition with a bachelor's degree or equivalent. Um, the bachelor's degree has to be in engineering or science. And a graduate of test pilot school with a minimum of 1500 hours flying and a qualified jet pilot. Now, I have no problem with this list. I think it's a great list. Um, well, like the, the height requirement is weird to me because the taller you are, the more you weigh usually, and the more you weigh, the more fuel is required to get you out of space. So it seems like to me they would be better off searching for like five foot four, five foot two pilots, like just to save on payload. Um, but like it makes sense to me that you want astronauts who can be scientists and also pilots. Like if you're sending three people to the moon, you don't want one person to get hit on the head and now they can't fly back to earth, you know? Um, so these requirements are fine. The issue, the issue is graduating from test pilot school because that is a Navy school that does not allow women to enter. So without saying it, they're saying you have to be a man. New information to me is that there was a privately funded research group that insisted that women would be better candidates for space travel. Women are smaller, which reduces your payload, right? Um, women have better reaction time in simulations of flying. Women are better at dealing with the elements. They handle high temperatures and lower temperatures better than men. And so the scientists working on this women in space project are like, we should test women. They get a group of pilots and they start testing them, putting them under the same training that the astronauts are going through. And of the 32 women, like eight of these women are just like acing it. They have more flight hours than any of the astronauts, but they wanna go and test these women and they want to say why aren't we hiring women look at these women and I don't really like the idea that women would be better at space travel like when you're looking at astronauts like you're taking the best of the best right so like I'm sure you would find a man who can handle the elements and like could do the simulation really well I don't think disqualifying people on account of their gender is cool actually so this privately funded women in space research is going on and the women are just like killing it and then it just gets shut down it's shut down randomly so this privately funded women in space like discovery project was just shut down one day and so there was a congressional hearing on why this happened why can't women be astronauts remember this is 1962 so it's not quite yet illegal to discriminate on sex. They're allowed to do that. That didn't happen until 1964, but it's being talked about a lot on how that's not okay. It's like, hey, these women, they have all the qualifications. They're meeting all the requirements. Like they're doing great in training. Why 
can't they be astronauts? Is it because they can't be test pilots? Because like, they're literally not allowed to go to the school. So why? Why? They have a congressional meeting and you can go read it if you want. It's a frustrating read. So it's the, the guy, the scientist running the experiment, a couple of the women, a couple astronauts and some Congress people. They're kind of going back and forth. Like we're not discriminating against women. If a woman met all the requirements, we would be happy to have her as an astronaut. It's like, the scientists just keep saying like, okay, but they cannot meet this qualification. Women are not allowed to be in the Navy test pilot school. Do you understand this? And like John Glenn will just be like, yeah, I do. But we're not discriminating against women. Like if women can meet the requirements, they can come with us. And they go, <laughs> they go back and forth and they're like, would you be willing to change the requirements? And John Glenn's, I don't know why we would need to do that. And then the scientist kind of drops those like, well, John Glenn, American hero, you didn't meet the requirements. You don't have a bachelor's degree. And John Glenn, without irony, is like, oh, well, they changed that qualification. They changed it from bachelor's degree in science or engineering to bachelor's degree in science or engineering or equivalent. And I have the equivalent. And the scientist is just like, so you don't have a problem with them changing the rules for you, but for women. And he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> it's so frustrating to read. Um, but you, you know, <laughs> you know what they're actually saying. Like, they are discriminating against women. Finally, American hero John Glenn just comes out and says it, and I will read it to you right now. I think it gets back to the way our social order is organized, really. It's just a fact. The men go off and fight the wars and fly the airplanes and come back and help design and build and test them. The fact that women are not in this field is a fact of our social order. It may be undesirable. It's It obviously is, but we're only looking, as I said before, to people with certain qualifications, if anybody can meet them. I'm all for it. And it's really weird that he was saying this in 1962 because the only reason these women are trained as as pilots is because during the war, women became pilots because women fought in the war. John Glenn, American hero. So the thing ends and women don't get to be astronauts. The program is over. Um, women don't get to be astronauts. Thanks, John Glenn. At the end of this hearing, there is this really frustrating moment about a page after John Glenn is like, it's just a fact that men go to war and women, what John Glenn, what do they do? Tell me. Um, where they're ending the session and this guy is just sucking up to John Glenn. And he's just like, thank you, American hero for coming to visit us. I see how the ladies will look at you but they look at you in another way too. You know, they bring their babies to look at you, what a leader you can be. And it's like, dude, what? He just said he didn't think women were good enough to go to space. Do you think women bring their children and say, look at this guy, he's so amazing. Like, I hope they don't bring their daughters. Now, when you bring this up on the internet, as I have before, because I'm a fun person, um, people always go, but John Glenn apologized. John Glenn said sorry. He was wrong. Women can be good astronauts. He was wrong and he said sorry. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> like, yes, when John Glenn ran for Senate, he apologized and said that he liked women and women can be good at stuff. But like, it doesn't really change. Like, like accept the apology. Like we accept it. Uncancel John Glenn, it's fine. It doesn't change the way he said it's a fact <laughs> that men go off and fight the wars and fly the planes and women don't do that. And then as a result of him saying that statement, women did not get to go to space for 20 years in America. It's like he's still responsible, right? Like, okay, he apologized, great. Did he apologize for taking a $200,000 bribe while he was a congressman and costing American taxpayers $2 billion? No, no, he didn't. He said, I didn't do anything wrong. So maybe he recanceled John Glenn. So women in space, it doesn't happen in America in the 60s. As a result of the women in space program, Russia did get worried that America would be the first person to put a woman in space because of course they are the first person to put a man in space. And so in 1963, I'm gonna try Valentina Tereshikova went to space. Um, 
she's actually still alive. She was only like 25 when she went to space because they weren't really looking for like an astronaut. They were like, any woman who can skydive, we need to get you into space so we can beat the Americans. A cosmonaut was the first female in space. And can we just say that cosmonaut is way cooler than an astronaut and we should switch. Uh, she was also the first person to poop in space. And I love that for us. You can't take that away from us. Um, they talked about this in the hearing. They were like, yeah, Russia will just put a woman in space, like just to show that they can, but what's the benefit? Are they doing any science? And it's just like rude, John Glenn, why? But even though they weren't allowed, women wanted to go to space. So John Glenn received hundreds and hundreds of letters from children, like asking him about space, telling them they wanted to grow up to be scientists. And what's really common in the girls' letters is that they'll say things like, I wish I wasn't a girl so I could do science or like my teacher says I'm really good at science for a girl or like I wish I could go to space and I'm really sad I can't because I'm a girl and he would just respond with like a form letter that was like thanks for showing interest in the space program here's the pamphlet <laughs> like I know that he probably didn't actually read or respond to those letters he probably had like a secretary with like form letters to send but like you can't even lie like John Glenn had a daughter that same age, like Carolyn Glenn sits on her dad's lap and is like, I can't wait to be an astronaut like you. And he's just like, actually, Carolyn, it's a biological fact that you will never go to space. <sighs> but don't worry, Carolyn, he apologized 20 years later, so it's fine. I will tell you a story of Linda Halpern. She was a girl, a 10 year old in 1962. And she wrote a letter, she wrote a letter to John F. Kennedy asking about the space program. She said, I want to be an astronaut. What should I do for, to prepare? How can I go to space? And a NASA official responded and said this, your willingness to serve your country as a volunteer is commendable. However, we have no present plans to employ women on space flights because of the degree of scientific and flight training and the physical characteristics which are required. You can't even lie <laughs> to the little girl. Just lie and say, study hard. Here's a pamphlet about space. Like, um, anyway, Linda saves this letter. She becomes an attorney. And in 1978, five women are inducted into the current astronaut class. We did it, guys. <laughs> women in space. The first American woman to go to space is Sally Ride in 1983. And Linda Halpern writes a letter to Sally and says, I'm so proud of you. I always wanted to go to space but I didn't think it was possible. And she attaches the letter from NASA. So it's the 80s, we're going to space. Women are going to space, okay? In America, because two cosmonauts have already been women in space, but it's fine. Sally Ride is gonna go to space for six days. It's all over the news, people are so excited. So the rocket scientists are trying to come up with a list of things that are different, like a woman in space, what what do we need? And they go up to Sally and they're like, you, you're you gonna need makeup, a makeup kit, right? Like, can you give us a list of what you want in your makeup kit and we will make it like zero G approved. And she's like, I'm training to go to space. I don't care about makeup. I don't need a makeup kit. What are you talking about? But like. But NASA is insistent, she needs a makeup kit. So they go to the other female astronauts in the class and they're like, Sally needs a makeup kit. Can you just come up with a list of like what you think she needs, like the required products and like dutifully because they're astronauts and they're badass and they follow instructions. They're like, okay. And the makeup kit is produced but never used. And I think that's very funny, but stop me if you've heard this one before. Remember when NASA sent a woman to space for Will that be enough? <sighs> the first woman in space. What if she gets her period? They go up to Sally Ride, literal rocket scientists, and they're like, Sally, <laughs> you're going to space for six days. Is a hundred tampons enough? Or what do you think? I love that story. <laughs> I love, I love that story. And I don't think it means 1980s NASA rocket scientists are sexist or like they didn't want to support 
Sally Ride in space. I just think it highlights how little thought had had to be given to women in space because like the space program has existed for 40 years. This is your first woman in space and you, you come up with a hundred tampons. And like, of course they didn't send a hundred tampons. They asked her and she was like, maybe like half that, um, which is still like a lot of tampons, 50 tampons, a lot of tampons for six days. But my favorite, my favorite part of that story is when you bring it up on the internet in modern times, like if you write a really hilarious song about the 100 tampons story, out of the woodwork, hundreds of people come to defend 100 tampons. They want to defend the NASA scientists. And I think it's so funny. And I'm gonna give you four of my favorite ones to see. The first is the Fermi problem. So the guy will be like, let me tell you how engineers make, you know, because women can't be engineers, Twitter guy, okay. And he's like, six days, just round it to seven days, okay? How many tampons do you need per day? Three, four, order of magnitude, that's 10. Seven times 10 is 70. Round it to 100. That's how they got 100 tampons. You're welcome. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, the fact that they somehow got to 100 tampons doesn't mean that that is not a ridiculous number of tampons and a hilarious thing to ask a human woman if she needs for six days, okay? So they somehow got to 100 tampons and didn't realize that was a dumb number of tampons. Thank you, sir. Thank you for explaining that to me. It's not funny anymore. Okay. Um, the second one is that they're like, NASA scientists, rocket engineers, they're like nerds, right? So they probably didn't know any women. And the idea that in 1982, when they're planning this mission, no man at NASA had a mom or a sister or a girlfriend or an aunt or a daughter that he felt comfortable asking, hey, is 100 tampons enough for six days? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> um, the next one is the just in case guys. Like, okay, she's going for six days. Maybe she only needs 14 tampons, but like, what if she's there for longer? Emergencies happen in space. And <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to tell them like 100 tampons is like six months worth of tampons. I mean, like, are you extending the mission by like 140 days? Like, on Tampa, like if she is stuck in space, poor Sally is stuck in space for 140 days longer than you expect, tampons are gonna be the last thing that she's worried about. 100 tampons is ridiculous and objectively hilarious, even if it's just for emergencies. Like, my favorite guy, though, my favorite guy who's really upset with you for making fun of NASA scientists for suggesting that Sally Ride needs 100 tampons for six days is the guy who's like, well, they didn't know how periods worked in space. <sighs> I want more information from these men. I want them to tell me the role they think gravity plays in menstruation on Earth and the catastrophe that a menstruating person would have to suffer if they happened to be in space while they were on their period. Like, just like, please tell me what you think happens to a period in zero G and how having extra tampons would solve that problem. Sally Ride, American Hero, died in 2002 and she was known as like the first woman in space, like American Hero, first female astronaut from America. And she said there wouldn't be true equality in space until it wasn't newsworthy that women were in space. So she did not live to see that day. Fast forward to 2019. There's four people doing a space mission and two of them are men and two of them are women. We did it. Yay! Equality in space, right? And they're doing like a walk, like you know where they put on the big suits and they go outside and they're like in space and it turns out the two people that are most qualified, the best trained for this specific mission, are the two women. And so it hits the news. Sorry, Sally. Big news. It's an all-female spacewalk, the first. So these two women are gearing up. They're doing interviews from space, and everyone's really excited. And then one of the women realizes that they don't have the spacesuits. They don't have two medium-sized spacesuits. Women are smaller, they need a smaller spacesuit. She decides that she cannot safely go out in the large suit. So instead of having the first all-female spacewalk, 
she trains the colleague that's also in space so that he can go out with a large spacesuit and be safe. Womp, womp. <laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> Again, I don't think 2019 NASA is sexist. It's just like women, it's been 70 years of NASA and women are still not thought of as equal astronauts. Like the idea that you would need to have two medium-sized spacesuits because you have two women astronauts just didn't occur. Like it had never happened before that two women had to go out at the same time. They had never needed the equipment, so they didn't have it. It's just like it's 2019 and you don't have two medium-sized suits. Like you have two medium-sized astronauts. You need two medium suits. So fast forward to 2022. We're going to the moon again. Did you know I feel like a lot of people don't know we're going to the moon again? It's been, it's been like at every NASA meeting for like a decade, like we're going to the moon again. There are 18 astronauts training to go to the moon in 2024, fingers crossed, um, and nine of them are women and nine of them are men. We did it. Yay! We did it and I bet you bet you they're gonna have enough medium-sized spacesuits. So if two women are chosen to go to the moon, two women will walk on the moon. And that'll be amazing. Um, they're called the Artemis missions. You've probably seen the launch getting canceled over and over again the past few weeks, which is good. You want a canceled mission and you don't want a failed mission. Hopefully in 2024, there will be women on the moon. And because the astronaut class is half and half, we did it, equality, women in space, we're equal. But are we equal though? Artemis launches from Cape Canaveral, Florida, a state where women are only people, they only have bodily autonomy until the 15th week of pregnancy and lawmakers in the state are trying to get rid of that altogether. In the year 2024, will women actually be allowed to go to space in Florida? Like, the way it seems to be going is that women are constantly in a state of pre-pregnancy and any behaviors that would risk that, like driving a car or having a bank account or working outside the home, are incompatible with safely being a pre-pregnant woman. Like, do we actually think women will get to go to space in 2024? being held in jail, having committed no crimes because the state has decided that they are not treating their fetus appropriately. They're sleeping on the floor in a jail cell, even though they have done absolutely nothing wrong. Didn't have a skull and she was forced to fly to New York to get an abortion. Like, what is the world like in two years? Do women get to go to space? Artemis, not that one, this one. Um, she's the goddess of the hunt, right? But also she is the protector of women and girls. She avenges the mistreatment, the brutality toward the rape of women and girls with murder. Artemis is also a cruel goddess. She's thought to bring the pain with childbirth. If you saw Artemis in a dream while you were pregnant, it was said that you would die during childbirth. With, because without medical intervention, which is now not allowed in about half the states, a percentage of women will just die from things like ectopic pregnancies, which happen to 1% of pregnancies. There's nothing you can do about it and it will kill you. What is 2024 gonna be like? Because it's like we're living in two different worlds. Do you ever feel that? like? we're putting telescopes in space like nasa says they're gonna go to mars and well i don't think they're gonna do it by 2030 i do believe them i believe that they have the technology they can do it like a new disease devastated the world and they came up with a vaccine in two years but like women aren't people in half the states and the people making the laws have like no understanding of how the human body works. They sound like those Twitter guys, like no one knows how periods work in space. 
It's like these two completely disparate worlds that exist on totally different planes where like we're moving forward, we're making these advancements like science and then like we're moving backwards and nobody cares that climate change is gonna kill us all and like women aren't gonna have rights in three years and like what is happening and like Artemis can represent either one. So which is it gonna be? I've been watching the failed launches with this existential dread of like, if Artemis is the signal, if she is the harbinger, what future, which Artemis do we get? So like vote, I guess. Oh, I'm running out of time. Shit. <laughs> I was gonna do a whole thing with the Legos and capitalism. Like it's so depressing and disgusting. Nothing about against Lego. They make great toys, but like the fact that capitalism benefits from presenting this false idea that women can be whatever they want to be even though they're not people in half the states is so disgusting to me like a nine-year-old girl who goes to john glenn elementary school in ohio who wants to be an astronaut sits down to write a letter to santa because she's nine literally a child believes in santa claus and asks for this lego kit and then gets raped gets pregnant, is forced to carry the fetus to term by the state and dies in childbirth because do you know how dangerous childbirth is for children? Do you know what the death rate is for children? And she doesn't get to be an astronaut. She doesn't get to. Women aren't people in half the states. Like, <laughs> it's profitable to pretend that women can be astronauts, but can they be astronauts? Will a woman go to space in 2024? A nine-year-old's mom can get her the Lego set for Christmas, but can she be an astronaut when she can't even control her own body? <sighs> That's probably another video. Thanks for watching. Like, like, and subscribe. The next one's more fun. It's a, it's a Halloween one.